But like currently, the game development in Vietnam is it's not looking really. It's not looking good. Mm. Uh, you can see that there's many uh, big titles in Vietnam. I don't want to. I don't want to say this, but uh, our Vietnamese people is not using our time very effectively. Lit gang, spit it out. Powered by B2, top one English speaking app. Hello everyone, this is Tony from Lit Gang, and another month has come, and Hanoi is getting colder. And in today's episode, we're gonna meet a uh, very smart lighter. Actually, he has already featured in another video of Lit Gang in Tea Time with Lit Gang. In today's video, I'm very honored to have chance to have a conversation with him. Before getting to the main part, there will be like a lot of interesting topics that are going to be brought on the table. And if you want to discuss those kind of topics, please access B2 Group Talk feature exclusively for Lit Gang. And now, without further ado, please welcome the reigning dragon of Lit Gang, Drago. Hey, I was supposed to. Where am I supposed to look at? Yeah, this uh, one, right? Yeah, or oh, this one. Or you can look at me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm gonna look at you. Okay, so could you please introduce a little bit about yourself? Mm, okay, so where should I start? My English name is Drago. Mm -hmm. Vietnamese name is Vu Thanh Long. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I am currently 19 years old. 19? Study, oh, yeah, 19. Not even 19 yet. I haven't had my birthday this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm currently studying at um, VNU, oh. Vietnam National University. So how do you feel when you had a second chance to appear in our videos? Especially this is a very new background, you know, outside. Yeah, I, I, without I am any honored. Sofa. I am honored to be, uh, you know, invited to have this conversation. Uh -huh. yeah. Being outside makes me feel more comfortable. Uh -huh. I think comfortable. Yeah. Okay. So, do you usually, you know, sit on, you know, like the uh, sidewalk like this and sip some tea or something? Oh, uh, I would love to actually, but nobody invites me to <laughs> to go out to have these kind of talks. So. I usually just sit at home. Okay, so let's sip some tea and start the conversation. All right. Uh, I watched the whole video of you and Steph and Trix and Doris. Yes. Um, so if you want to watch that video, there will be a link. We're going to insert it up here. And um, I know that you, uh, of course, that you, your name is Lapo Fortune. Yes. <laughs> and uh, your major is computer science. And this is my very first time, you know, is have a, having a conversation with um, a science boy. Yeah, so Sounds it's good. also my you know, like big honor. So you got an 8.0 for the IELTS test, and you have just come back from the uh, short-term scholarship program in Japan. So after one year studying, uh, pursuing that kind of major, do you find any similarities between you and computer science? How do you feel uh, about your decision at that time? Hmm. If you ask me about like similarity between me and the subject, hmm. like the major that I'm studying, mm -hmm. I would say that it is very methodical. Methodical. Yeah, because you have to follow like uh, algorithms, you have to learn algorithms, you have to learn formulas, and it make it a very structured um, kind of major. I would like to describe myself as one as well. Mm. I like to plan things out uh, so that I don't get a, I don't get overwhelmed. And so now after one year of studying it, I'm still confused uh, as to what I'm I supposed confused. to do. <laughs> Because, you because know, at the last episode of Tea Time with Lee I, I can see, you know, your enthusiasm about, you know, like with this kind of major. And now you said you're confused. So have you ever got, you know, like some kind of second thoughts or some kind of regrets? Or um, if you can, only, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do have regrets. The, the, my regret is that I did not look into more technical stuff earlier mm. on. Mm. Because like my, my peers at my school, they are really good doing like coding or mm -hmm. doing projects and I haven't I have little to no experience in that field. Mm. It sounds a little bit cliche but you know we do have you know different strengths and weaknesses. Um flight as you have just mentioned that your peers, your classmates there they have already been good at coding and technological stuff like that. But you're all good at English. So oh, yeah. does it bring any, you know, like some kind of competitive competitive advantage? Competitive advantage. Yeah. I would say uh, it does. It does boost my confidence. Um, in the future, the partners that we will be working with will mostly be from overseas. So as you have just mentioned, that you, the partners that you are going to work with in the future would be people from other countries. So what kind of project is that? 
because I'm studying computer science, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of branches from that major. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I can go into like the research route where I um, learn more about like something like artificial intelligence, something about data. Oh, I have a question. So after one year experience, this kind of field, the field of computer science, so do you think that in this field, should we go alone or should we go as a team? You can go alone, that is a fact, but it will take a toll on your health for sure. So if you go alone, you have to, you have to do everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. the, the workload will be much greater. Okay, I, I just wonder, so for example, like I'm currently working, I don't consider myself as a content creator or something, but I, when I ever do something, I always try to give my signature into my words. But as you have just mentioned about, you know, like the computer science, I think that there will be like, a box inside uh, yeah, around it and it's just some, some kind of stiff so how do you bring your signature into every work of yours i just wonder especially when you work as a team especially when you are working in fields where you know numbers data you know are everywhere somewhere i think like one of the, one important aspect of our work is precision mm -hmm. so we would like to make it as precise as possible but as you said it can be stiff mm -hmm. um in this step when it comes to uh, when you do like, orders for companies. Mm. But if you're creating your <coughs> own apps, say a game for example, yeah, you can choose your art style, your gameplays. Uh -huh. th that, that is where you can you know, express your individuality. Mm. So speaking of games, <laughs> okay, speaking of games, I feel you have already know, uh, know what I'm going to ask you because in back to, you know, like the previous episode of Tea Time, you said that you want to create your own game. How do you think of the current situation, the current gaming industry in Vietnam? Gaming industry in Vietnam. Yeah. Um, I would think it is a growing industry. It's growing really fast as well. Mm -hmm. the, um, the needs for, you know, entertainment at home mm -hmm. on the electronic devices is increasing. It is getting more comfortable for people to, you know, just stay at home and pushing buttons. Mm -hmm. Have some kind of satisfaction with that. Um, but like currently, the game development in Vietnam is it's not looking really. It's not looking good. Mm. Uh, you can see that there's many uh, big titles in Vietnam, but it is it mostly come from like uh, companies. From China or Singapore, uh, like the V company and the G company. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, so, and you can see that recently there are some uh, indie games released uh, by Vietnamese developers. Mm -hmm. The most recent one is called is it Death. Yeah, okay, no. it's a horror game. Has received good receptions mm. from um, from the global audience, but it cannot. It has not reached the level of. Big titles, yeah. Back to the story of creating your own game. So, do you ha have you got any you know ideas popping up in your head? Yeah, or something. Mm. Of course, that it's too soon to tell, right? Yeah. Because you still have you know like a long path uh, forward. But I think that, for example, like uh, when I do something, I I do have some kind of vision. Just maybe it can be short term, but it can be long term. So, how about you? In my opinion, mm -hmm. like the current game industry is a little bit oversaturated. No. With titles. Um, you know, they are recreating games with the same formulas. Mm -hmm. um, it's still pushing buttons. There's genres that uh, they are, have defined genres. Mm -hmm. And maybe if I were to go forwards with my plan, I would like to create something with a new technology, like the recent um, creation of like VR. No. Uh, that's rising popularity of VR headset. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would like to create some projects using that technology. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, what you have to say is about technology, but I just want to dig deeper into the content of the game. Yeah, so at the beginning of this conversation, you have said that we, uh, the games are supposed, are meant to, you know, like fulfill our entertainment uh, needs. Um, but this is just my personal opinion that, you know, like entertainment purpose, entertainment values is only, you know, like short term. Yes. So if you want to create some kind of long term and it can last for long, you should think something bigger. For example, I'm not saying this, this um, in order to promote B2 or something. I'm currently working as a <laughs> academic uh, specialist at B2, which means that uh, my duties are creating topics on B2. 
based on my observation, I think that most apps today, they just focus on the uh, learning English instead of giving the true value. For example, educating kids or people about the true values of Vietnam. Mm. That's why I always try to create some kind of local topic. For example, like I take inspiration from the Vietnamese uh, myths. For example, like we have like multiverse, right? So sometimes I create some kind of multiverse, but you know, in some kind of case of Vietnam. My question is, so what makes a local brand? Of course, in this case, gaming, truly local. And you know, like does those kind of things restrict us from going globally? To add some locality to your, to your games, right? Mm -hmm. um, you gotta implement some aspect of the culture into it mm -hmm. to make it unique. Um, there, as I already said, the, the example that I said earlier, the horror game called The Death, mm -hmm. it, it used um, it used myths and legends, urban legends mm -hmm. in Vietnam mm -hmm. to to make a mark uh, on the market. I think it might be the only way. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure because, as you can see, if you want to have a good revenue, mm -hmm. you need to satisfy the majority of your audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the public views tends to stay the same mm -hmm. for a lot, for a long period of time. So you gotta create something that fits that box. Um, you can add in little little bits of content mm -hmm. that relate to the culture, but overall. Uh, the gameplay is, there's there's no there's no way to implement them into the gameplay. It's only the content. So okay, so back to my my previous question. So, in your opinion, what restricts the uh, the game the gaming industry being able to go globally? Um, I just think it is lacking attention mm -hmm. because our percept um, the Vietnamese perception of games is. I would say it's still negative. Oh. Uh, parents always, always think that yeah. gaming yeah. gaming is bad I, for the kids, do agree. right? I do agree. Uh, and I think that needs to change. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I just think it needs more attention, more funding, and a change in perspective mm -hmm. to grow. Yeah. So you know that what really matters, like the uh, the mindsets of people in Vietnam. Yes. And I do agree with you about. Oh, the fact that parents, they, you know, they always have some kind of misconception yeah. of game. I think that games, they don't have any problems. So speaking of uh, going globally, uh, at the beginning of the video, I have just uh, introduced to the viewers that you, uh, you, you earned a scholarship to uh, Chiba Institute of Technology. I just wonder how the, uh, the process of earning the uh, scholarship, was it hard or something? And do, did you have some kind of advantages over other applicants? Yeah. It is not very complicated. Oh, really? Yeah. I remember seeing the notification uh -huh. for the program on uh, my school website. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided, because it was still in the summer semester, right? I decided that, like, why? Why don't I apply for it? Because I haven't got any plan. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, I just go ahead with the plan. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that I have the other requirements. Maybe if I get lucky, I can um, I could get that scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I did. How long was it? How, how long was the trip to Japan? Um, it was just only a week. It's more of like a summer camp, I would say. Uh, yeah. So how did you feel when you can represent your country, represent your people going globally? Because I, I remember when I was in high school, I did participate in some kind of summer camps in China. And you know, like my teacher, she always told us that like, you have to remember that you are representing your country. <laughs> so you should be like a beauty pageant, something like that. You have to be like something. You know, it's sometimes uh, it makes me really pressure. Yeah. So do you have any pressure when you represent the uh, country in Japan? Our teachers couldn't that put that kind of pressure on us. <laughs> uh, they, they, uh, they told us that. Uh, because it's a learning experience, right? Uh -huh. So they just have to learn as much as possible mm -hmm. um, and have fun. Yeah, uh, that's an important part. Okay, so the purpose of this um, summer camp, summer, right? Yeah, summer, yeah. is to learn. So, what is the most? No, I don't want to say the most interesting. What is the worst thing that you have learned? The worst and, thing? Yeah, that you wish you hadn't learned. Worst thing? Yeah, the thing that you wish you hadn't learned, you, 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 you hadn't known it hmm. after that summer camp.
Alright, <laughs> tricky, right? Yeah, this is kind of tricky. Are you asking like the worst thing that I've learned? You can be a passion queen. <laughs> like, um, I think that every experience has its own values. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> it's up to you. Uh, what, or maybe like, what thing that you wish you can learn from them? Wish I can learn from yeah. them? Oh, I would like to learn their work ethic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say this, but uh, our Vietnamese people is not using our time very effectively. They are not um, efficient, right? Yeah. Efficient. yeah. It is not efficient enough. Wow, it's like a big slap in my face. Yeah. Ouch! I just don't want to say. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, keep going. Okay. So, uh, I saw that the Japanese people they they have a dedicated uh, time frame, um, a timetable for their work, mm -hmm. and they put all of their focus on into it. Mm -hmm. Like in Vietnam, we have a lunch break, right? Yeah. From uh, around 11, 11 a.m. to one p.m. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Uh, but in Japan, they have like 30 minutes. Only 30 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> they, eat, they, they finish their lunch and take like, what, 15 minutes rest. And then they just go right back to work. And that, um, but they start later on in the day, like from 9 a.m. and they work um, continuously. Okay, so can you please make a comparison between Vietnamese students and Japanese students and the industry in general? In the industry in general, right? Yeah. So, as you can see, that Japanese is, uh, has developed before us mm -hmm. for like a few, what, 20, 30 years mm -hmm. before us, right? So their technology is bound to be better. But I think Vietnamese are uh, students from Vietnam uh, because we still have a lot of room to improve. I see a lot of potential in um, Vietnamese students. And if I remember correctly, like the lecturers from Japan, they said that Vietnamese students here are creative and hardworking, uh, so they have the potential to develop um, greater. Uh, just put their focus on um, their major. So I think that everything is is now back to the story of we cannot pay, uh, we can't fully pay attention to what we are doing and. Yeah, like a discipline. Um, we're, we're saying this not because we want to, you know, like give shades on Viet Vietnam. It's really good when we can aware our weaknesses. Yeah. And we, I, I think that I agree with you that Vietnamese people are creative and Vietnamese people are hardworking, especially on the hardworking. Yeah, I do agree with that. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you so much for your sharing. Okay, so I think that. It's the end of this part, and then okay. like another part. Another part. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so this is All the right. second part, which is also the final part. So I think that if you have already watched the last two episodes, so there will be like something with the peanut candies. Okay, and actually, that this is an old game that I have already played with. Um, Suri, in the, in the uh, first episode, would you rather? I'm gonna choose for you and vice versa. If you don't want to answer this kind of question, you can put half of the peanut candy in your mouth and don't swallow it. I remember the first time I played that game, my mouth, it hurt a lot, you know, and it lasted for many days. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so I think okay. that uh, if your mouth hurts, There'll be someone behind the camera. She's gonna be really upset. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna play uh, rock, paper, and scissors in order to know who's gonna go first. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> you first. Okay, I'll go first. Let's see. What kind of question has you prepared? Oh. Would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on your life? Rewind button or, or pause? pause. But I think this one is easy. Yeah. yeah, so I think that I'm I want to have like a real right button because I I'm kind of living the past. I really want to rel relive a lot of memories in the past. I wish I could travel back to 2020. 2020. Yeah. 2020 was some kind of, you know, like a milestone of my life. How about, you know, the rewind time? So what rewind time? Um how do I say? Uh, I I'm actually not very good at handling situations, mm -hmm. and I sometimes 
uh, came Fucked up, up with. <laughs> yeah. Fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> you can swear. <laughs> a rewind button would help me resolve those kind of situations. Yeah. Okay, so it's time for me to choose for you. Okay. Actually, I didn't prepare those kind of things. So I actually, I don't know. Really? <laughs> it's kind okay. Of so what you... <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather stand up and dance WAP? WAP from uh, Cardi B? <laughs> or tell us three things you don't like about your other half in the game? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna rephrase a question. Okay, would you rather stand up and dance WAP or tell us three things you don't like about your other half in Lit Gang? <laughs> okay, so which one? Uh, oh. Can I just... <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause I'm ready. laughs> I, I'm gonna take a nail on this. Okay, half of candy in your bag. This one too. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you want to answer? Because I don't know. I, I don't... I don't... I can't think of three things about oh so there is a thing right there is a thing there is, there there is, is a, a thing, thing. yeah there of course i think that the pressure behind the camera is you know so intense <laughs> okay i'm gonna say okay. <laughs> not here not now okay so uh, would you rather be, be smart but lonely or dumb but so out of my mouth smart or lonely yeah. Smart but lonely, mm. or or dumb but surrounded by love. I think that I'm gonna go with the later being dumb, the but you know, like the uh, surrounded by love. Mm. Um, FYI, that I am very afraid of being alone. Yeah, I don't know why. Of course, that I love you know, like doing stuff alone. But you know, like whenever I imagine myself, you know, like going back home from work. You know, like, there's only me, myself, and I. I feel really heartbreak, heartbreak. It's really heartbreaking. Yeah. So how about you? I think that you have already smart. <laughs> so <laughs> I think mean, you have already smart. <laughs> but you know, in the ideal world, there will be like smart and surrounded by love. <laughs> yeah, it, it will be the ideal. That everybody wants to be. Mm. And, and I also think that the reason why I choose dumb because I think that right now there are a lot of celebrities, they're dumb but they're, they still, you know, like, got successful. So there's no reason why I choose, you know, smart and lowly. Yeah, sometimes you need to be dumb <laughs> and you still have love and then you have got money. There are a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of celebrities like MT NT, I don't know if you know it or not, but yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Now it's time for me, right? Oh, I'm gonna lose this so hard. Oh, would you rather give up your girlfriend or your game? <laughs> what is this? Is this the break? No? no? It's totally randomly. Would you rather give up your girlfriend or game? Wow, this is so hard. Okay, so I think that if you answer, be, be true to yourself. And if you uh, eat it, we know the answer. <laughs> I think I would have to go with my game. Yeah. Why? You give up your dream? <laughs> okay, let, let me tell you the answer. Because, you know, like, every time you're with her, you use like playing the, a game of love. So that uh, is also the kind of game, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm playing with my feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so would you rather give up your studies for instant success or keep pursuing your education without any certainty? Actually, I have already graduated, so, <laughs> so well, yeah. it's like, um, <laughs> it's my luck today. Uh, so I'm gonna choose instant success. Instant success. Because I think that at least that at that time, you are someone. Okay. You, do, you can do something that people can somehow remember you. If you keep doing something and people will never know who you are and you will never contribute something. So your life is meaningless. Yeah. So, so in Vietnamese, we have like, uh, yeah, I know, uh, I know. something like that. I think I would keep going with my study. Mm. Because like, if I were to have instant success, right? I don't think without the, 
the necessary knowledge, uh -huh. I will be able to keep it. Mm -hmm. And I want to live, like, I want my success to be long lived. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, even though it might not be certain, mm -hmm. but I will try my best. Mm -hmm. To make it work. Yeah. To make the uncertainties into yeah. certainty. Yeah. Right. I think that I have to. <laughs> <laughs> because you answer. So I. Uh, oh my god, I screwed up this game. I didn't remember the rules. Oh no. <laughs> that if you answer, I have to. Oh. Okay, so. Oh, I'm gonna start. 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 Very good. <laughs> okay. B. No more, no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the editor is so cruel. Which you uh, Okay, this is the last thing for you. Last thing, last thing. Oh, would you rather sing a song or two candies in your mouth? I heard you sing and you sing very well. How do you sing? Alright, you got a little hugo. What song? We did lemon tree. Alright, lemon tree. So this is gonna be like a special gift from Dragon. He's gonna sing a song for all of you. Okay, let's go. Okay, so. I'm sitting here in this boring room It's just another Sunday afternoon I'm wasting my time, I got nothing to do I'm waiting around, I'm waiting for you But nothing ever happens And I wonder I wonder how, I wonder oh, wow. why It's the wind of the blue sky oh, All that I can see ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไ